Hello, this is Frank Gaylard from Radiopedia.org and today we will be looking at low bar hemorrhages. As we saw in our previous video on hypertensive hemorrhages, intracranial hemorrhages are typically divided into primary and secondary according to whether or not there is an underlying lesion. Primary hemorrhages are further subdivided into hypertensive and low bar hemorrhages, although these two have underlying specific pathologies. In the case of low bar hemorrhages, it's cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Hemorrhages can also be divided according to their location into low bar, basal ganglia, pontine and cerebellar. The last three tend to be seen in patients with poorly controlled hypertension. Low bar hemorrhages tend to be large, located superficially within the cerebral hemispheres and are more commonly seen in elderly patients. Their superficial location makes them prone to extend into the subdural space although given their size they also can extend into the intraventricular system although this is not as common as with hypertensive hemorrhages. The distribution of low bar hemorrhages is due to the distribution of the underlying pathology namely that of cerebral amyloid angiopathy. This is seen on T2 star weighted or susceptibility weighted MRI images as multiple foci of signal loss scattered peripherally through the cerebral hemispheres. This is in contrast to chronic hypertensive microhemorrhages which are clustered in the basal ganglia and pons and cerebellar hemispheres matching the distribution of hypertensive hemorrhages. A differential for these regions of signal loss is multiple cavernous malformations seen either as an autosomal dominant condition or in patients who have received previous cranial irradiation. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy is the underlying pathology seen in patients who develop low bar hemorrhages. It is also known as congophilic angiopathy on account of the appearance of the amyloid deposits within the walls of the vessels seen on Congo red stain. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy should not be confused with systemic amyloidosis and this histological change is seen only within the brain. When evaluating patients with a large superficial hemorrhage, it's important to keep in mind the possibility of underlying lesions. This is especially the case in young patients. An underlying tumour, an underlying vascular malformation such as an arterial venous malformation or a cavernous malformation, and as well as a venous infarcts should be considered. The latter typically has a very heterogeneous or gyriform appearance to the blood and is located in parts of the brain drained by adjacent dural venous sinuses. In this case, the sigmoid sinus can be seen containing a filling defect. You can read more about low bar hemorrhages and other forms of intracranial hemorrhage on radiopedia.org. In our next episode, we will be covering hyperacute signs of ischemic infarction on CT. See you then.